After nine years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the crime, chaos, cost or disorder. 66 people died on average while we waited for this Prime Minister to make a decision on BC's request. The government dithered and people died. The government didn't even go as far as it could have in getting rid of its aggressive, radical and wacko legalization of hard drugs. Why did it take this government so long to reverse its course on legalization and will it promise never to do it again? The Honourable Government House Leader. Well, of course, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister dealt with that thoroughly earlier in this question period, and we've amended our arrangement with British Columbia. But that member needs to answer a very important question. The Leader of the Opposition has now vowed, vowed to have an a la carte Charter of Rights, That's where right. today he will decide what rights to have and what rights to not have. What will it be tomorrow, Mr. Speaker? Will it be women's reproductive rights? Will it be the right to a fair trial? Will it be the right to freedom of expression? The notwithstanding charter-ripping policies of this Conservative Party need an answer. They're so cute when they get all heated. Meadows, Maple Ridge. Liberals. After nine years, this Liberal NDP Prime Minister is not worth the crime, chaos, drugs and disorder. Across British Columbia, there's people strung out on drugs, often comatose or dying. The legalization of fentanyl, meth and crack has led to a tragic wave of death. The Liberals and NDP are panicking as their poll numbers drop. The public is fed up. Deadly hard drugs will still be able to use with today's announcement. When will this Prime Minister stop tinkering and completely end his wacko drug experiment? The Honourable Minister for Mental The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. I thank the Honourable Member for the question, but I must remind him that that question was already answered. And on this side of the House, what we want to emphasize is that a woman's right to choose and charter rights generally are non-negotiable. On this side of the House, we will always protect the Charter of Rights of Freedoms. We will always stand up for a woman's right to choose. And we ask everybody in this House to vote in favour of contraception for women so they have autonomy over their own bodies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Kelowna Lake Country. Mr. Speaker, after nine years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the crime, chaos, drugs and disorder. The Liberal Minister responsible for the legislation of hard drugs like fentanyl, meth and crack in British Columbia is still clinging to parts of the Liberals' wacko hard drug legislation experiment. Public open drug use is rampant in our streets. People are even afraid to take their dogs out to walk around their own neighbourhoods. On what day will the Prime Minister complain completely end this failed radical drug policy. The Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addictions. Mr. Speaker, let me be clear. Today we said yes to BC's request for an amendment to their pilot project. Let me be clear. I love that. BC asked the federal government to work with them with compassion, conviction, science and health expertise, Mr. Speaker. BC knows perfectly well, as the advocates and families who are part of this project, that we need to have a public health and public safety approach to this to save lives. The Honourable Member from Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, that minister is still supporting hard drug legalization. And here's how it's playing out in our communities. A resident from my community just told me about an incident she witnessed at a local clothing store where a man threatened the two ladies working there, screaming, stomping, and overturning displays. I was on the phone the other day with another resident who works at a uh, street front office, and I could barely hear her due to the screaming just outside her window. And yet this minister clings to parts of her wacko legalization policy. <laughs> Is, and crack. Again, on what day will the Prime Minister completely end this failed drug policy experiment? Before we continue with the answer from the uh, Government House Leader, I'm going to ask the Alma member from New Westminster, Burnaby, please to uh, not comment while members are asking the question. He doesn't have the floor at this time. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mm. 
course, the Minister and the Prime Minister have dealt with that question. But what is important is to review the, the past couple of weeks, a very disturbing trend in this country, Mr. Speaker, where the Leader of the Opposition has refused to disavow, to say it's unwelcome to have the support of white supremacists. Then he goes and winks and says, I will make the laws and I decide what rights exist in this country, right. what rights are, is he going to take away, <laughs> what rights does he intend to take away, is it women's reproductive rights, is it the right to freedom of expression, stand up and tell us what rights you take away. Whoa there, simmer down buddy, simmer down. Colleagues, the amount of time that the Speaker has to spend getting up to asking members to don't you don't have to. You are choosing. Take the floor. Uh, You've gone full question. dictator, bro. I would like members, please, to make sure that we could have our question period. He uses his own free will to stand up, and he's like, "How many times are you going to force me to get up?" Like, asking questions. What the hell is wrong with you? Refrain from speaking when a member is answering questions. After nine years, does the Prime Minister care that 42,000 Canadians have died from drug overdose? Nope, he Taxpayer does not. Taxpayer-funded supply of hard drugs has destroyed lives. Addiction workers confirm that most users of so-called safe supply are diverting these drugs into the hands of organized crime. Criminals are selling these drugs to children. Overdose is the number one cause of death in 10 to 17-year-olds in B.C. When will this Prime Minister end this dangerous drug trafficking experiment that profits Big Pharma and kills children? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, that question has been asked and answered. Mr. Speaker. Has been answered, Mr. Speaker, that deeply concerns Canadians. It is that over the past few weeks we have seen the leader of the Conservative Party openly associate with white supremacists and refuse multiple what? opportunities yes. to disavow their views. Then we saw him advocate an a la carte charter of rights and say he would pick which rights people have. And today we learned one right they do not support, a woman's right to choose. This is deeply concerning, Mr. Speaker. Canadians have a right to know. Here, here. Did I miss something? Although the... Uh when did Members Pierre relatively restrained meet with uh, whatever she just said? To hear the answer. If, if there are discussions going on, if people would like me to be very mindful of terms of what the question is saying. The Honourable Member from South, uh, uh, South Surrey, White Rock. Uh, well, thank you. Well, Canadians have the right to know when the RCMP are sounding the alarm why organized crime is getting their hands on these so-called safe supply drugs and diverting them. Thousands of these big pharma government pills have been seized. Organized crime is profiting from selling taxpayer-funded drugs to children. And no, this has not been answered yet today. But the NDP Liberal government is refusing to release the contracts that distribute these drugs. Canadians deserve to know how and why their money is being used. When will the Prime Minister release the big pharma contracts? Just the date, please. Yeah. Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, that question has been asked and answered. But I'll tell you what the Conservatives really don't want to answer. They don't want to answer why their leader openly flirts with white supremacists and refuses several opportunities to disavow them. They don't want to answer why their leader openly talks about an a la carte <laughs> charter of rights. And today was the big reveal, Mr. Speaker, that one of the rights they're going to take away is a woman's right to choose. But we will not let them. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, Hard drug use has become commonplace in the Montreal metro. There's are assault, drug use and homelessness, and it's a scourge in the metro. Riders feel unsafe. It's as if everything that's happening on the surface, the housing crisis, inflation, the opioid crisis, mental health problems, is causing repercussions in Montreal's underground. Can the Prime Minister guarantee that he will ignore the bloc's calls and not decriminalize hard drugs in Quebec? The Honourable 
Minister of Yeah, Legal I'm Affairs. seeing in the comments people are getting Thank angry. You. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the back and forth bullshit. Question. I don't blame you. Countless times, and it's been answered countless times. The leader of the opposition won his leadership race by ensuring that he had the votes of Maxime Bernier supporters and extreme right supporters, Ooh. as well as those who are against abortion. Those people voted for him. Wow. He refuses you don't hear that name very often in the House of Commons. And their ideas. He is here. And one of his members is, in fact, making anti-abortion statements right here on the floor of this place. The 